CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board for April 1st, 2024. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the board, and if the, uh, the members could please introduce themselves. Steve Rebel Lab, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shana Corman Houston. Ken Allow. And we also have uh, Claire Ricker, the uh, Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, joining us this evening. Uh, let's move to our first agenda item, which is to review the meeting minutes from our meeting on March 18th, 2024. And we'll see if there are any additions or corrections, starting with Ken. I have none. Shana? I have none. Jean? I do not have any. And Steve? Nothing here. I have no additions or corrections either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes as submitted? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I may yes as well. The meeting minutes are approved. Moving on to agenda item number two. Uh, this is the, um, we have held our public hearing. This is the continuance of the public hearing for the redevelopment board rules and regulations, which have already been um, been discussed. Uh, so we will now open that for deliberation and uh, a vote on the proposed changes to rule eight, rules 18 and 20 in the redevelopment board's rules and regulations. So we'll start with any uh, comments, any additional um, proposed modifications, starting with Ken. I have none. Shana. Um, I had two okay. very small things. In rule 18, um, in if you go to procedures, uh, Number one, photos of existing signs, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the sentence, um, I would propose adding and immediately adjacent properties. So photos of signs, uh, existing signs, not just on that site, but on immediately adjacent properties. Claire, are you? Where that is. Photos of existing signs, if any, maintained on premises, and photos of signs. And um, any adjacent properties? Yep. Okay. Okay. And the one other was in Rule 20, Section B2B. Um, I was wondering, is it worth is it worth asking, not just are there wetlands on or near the site, but is there known contamination or a need for remediation? Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Jean, any additions or corrections? I'm, I'm fine with Shane's first addition. Um, whether, there, whether we want to start asking for whether this contamination on site is, is a discussion I had a number of years ago with the previous planning director who convinced me we shouldn't do that um, because it's up to either the Board of Health in, in town or the Massachusetts DEP to um, make decisions about that and not us. Um, On the other hand, there have been some places that have been built and they had to do a lot of site remediation and they told us about it ahead of time. So we learned about it anyhow. So I would, I'm leaning against it, but I could be persuaded to include it. Is there, um, Jean, a way that you would prefer it be worded such as any known contamination um, you know again we're not asking them to do soil testing and other items specifically for the special permit um, yeah although I can't submission. remember the exact wording maybe one of you know if if there's known contamination they would have had to report it right to, exactly so um, it, the DEP. to your point 
it would be moot because that is under a separate jurisdiction. To the DEP. I guess maybe uh, I think what I was getting at or what my concern was is, uh, is the design that we're looking at impacted by known contamination? Are you designing something that looks different or is um, arranged differently because because of contamination, um, much as you would for wetlands, um, uh, you know, you're using less of the site because of wetlands, or you're trying to stay out of wetlands. I'm thinking of um, uh, sites sites that I am aware of um, where former contamination has resulted in um, in podium in, in mm -hmm. uh, ground level parking and podium above, and which might not be desirable um, but for but for addressing the contamination. Would you would it um, arrive at the same end that you are looking for if we added, uh, are there wetlands on or near the site or any other um, something like special site conditions or, um, you know, that could cover yeah. not only that, but also, you know, are we looking at ledge or, you yeah. know, other items which might impact the ability yeah. for foundations and other items to be constructed? I think that makes good sense. Okay. Okay. Um, Jean, thoughts on expanding B to are there any wetlands on or near the site or any other special site conditions? That's fine. Okay. All right. Uh, Steve? I'm um, happy with the proposal as amended. Great. Ken, any concerns about the amendments proposed? As modified, I'm okay. As modified? Yeah, as modified, saying that. Uh, the design was altered or done because of the following, yes. Okay. Instead of, we're not here to decide if there's contaminated soil or that We don't have the expertise. Right. And, uh, but it would be nice to know if the design was changed that way, so we wouldn't be pushing one way or the other. We, we knew, yeah, I'm okay with that. Just identify special site conditions. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, great. Claire, are you I have good sense. on me? Yeah. Modifications? Are there wetlands on or near the site or any other special site conditions? Perfect. Got it. And then we um, changed in Rule 18 um, procedures okay. number one to include maintained on the premises um, and photos of signs on adjacent properties. Correct. Great. Um, is there a motion? Let's see. Is there a motion to adopt the changes to the board rules and regulations as amended this evening? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those changes have been approved. We will now um, discuss and vote on the Redevelopment Board Report to 2024 Annual Town Meeting, which is agenda item number three. And Claire, if I could ask if you bring that up, if you have that up already. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so I had already submitted um, my modifications as we discussed um, at our last board meeting. So I will start with Steve uh, for any uh, any additional uh, modifications that you would like to propose. Sure. Um, I just I sent these as written yes. form, but um, I'm happy to read them. Sure. Or if you wanted to highlight those again, because they are um, were those included as course? Those were not included as correspondence, but we can add those. Um, following this meeting to correspondence for the meeting, which I think would be a good idea, Steve. Okay. So if you, um, Claire, I don't know if you have Steve's proposed modifications. There were two. Correct. Two, um, two items. I don't know if you have those available to be able to pull up on the screen. 
that's fine. Um, Steve, if you could run through those then so that we can capture those um, in the notes of the meeting, that would be great. Sure. Um, Thank you. The first uh, proposed um, set of changes involves the discussion <laughs> for Article 29. Great. Okay, so I propose in the first sentence, I propose striking the words in the uncommon situation in which and adding the word when. So Article 29 would reduce the height buffer distances required when two different heights are specified for the same zoning district. Uh, the next change is to the three percentages listed, uh, 32, 45, and 60. I would suggest reordering them as 45, 60, and 32. And um, I could explain how that got out of order, but um, you know, in terms of having percentages correspond respectively to the districts, uh, it's 45 and 60 and 32. Great. And then finally, uh, strike the sentence, this article would reduce the applicable buffer distances by 50% and move that clause to the end of the next sentence so that the next sentence reads, given that the overall height minimum, sorry, start again, given that the overall height maximums have been reduced, the required height buffer distances should likewise be reduced. And this article would reduce the applicable buffer distances by 50%. That makes sense. Um, does anyone have any um, comments or questions for Steve um, on the proposed modifications for Article 29? He proposed. I think they're fine changes. Sheena? Agreed. Kim? None. I have no issues either. All right, Steve, do you want to go to your next one? Uh, yes, uh, Article 31. So the general gist of the changes to the discussion of Article 31 involve um, changing multifamily neighborhood subdistrict to neighborhood multifamily subdistrict. Um, the only, so there are one, two places where that's that occurs, and then um, the addition, the one other change is in the sentence, properties in the MBTA communities overlay and commercial properties on Mass Ave have allowable taller heights. I would suggest rewording that to read, properties in the MBTA communities overlay and commercial properties on Mass Ave allow taller heights. So a small bit of wordsmithing. And that's it. Great, thank you. Any um, concerns or modifications to T Steve's suggested wording, Gene? I think it's fine, but I, I want to mention a nomenclature clash mm -hmm. that we had that I didn't realize until I was looking at this um, today. If, if you were to go back and look at the text for the um, <coughs> for the MBTA communities that was adopted by town meeting in the fall. We don't use the term subdistrict at all. Um, we use right. the term neighborhood multifamily overlay district and Massachusetts slash Broadway multifamily overlay district. But then when I went and looked at the parcel listing that was on the supplemental report that was submitted to town meeting a week later, it used the um, sub-district language instead. So we have a clash. My suggestion is the text, and, and it's obvious they're the same thing, but I think we can fix it, in that the text is adopted, approved. They are overlay districts. I think that's better. I would suggest that we change this to um, neighborhood multifamily overlay district the two times instead of sub-district. And if we are going to have to um, redo the parcel list, we can fix the nomenclature there so it doesn't use the word sub-district, but it uses the terms that are in the text. So okay. that's my other suggestion for Article Great. Thank you, Claire. Are you um, 
clear on the changes as proposed so that we can re reword this. I know that the um, timing for getting this out to town meeting is fast approaching, um, so I want to make sure. So we're changing sub-district to overlay district in Article 31 discussion. Yes, multifam na the neighborhood, neighborhood multifamily, multifamily overlay, overlay district. district. Right. Overlay and district are two words. Yeah, yeah. got it. Great. Okay, Shana, any questions or concerns about Steve's proposed modifications? No. Ken? No. Great. Anything else, Steve? Nothing. All right, Jean. I'm um, not to Steve's proposed changes. Sorry, I meant, do you have any of your own? Oh, yes, <laughs> to I be do. more specific. Yes, I do, sorry. If, if, again, if we go to Article 31, there are a few other places where it uses the term um, sub-district okay. instead of overlay district. I think there are three or four or five places where it does that. So I think if we could change the discussion and then change the vote and recommendation, the draft amendment, so mm -hmm. it says neighborhood multifamily MMF overlay district. And then when we fix the other thing, we can fix that. Okay. That's my only other comment on all of that. Great, great. And Claire, you heard that from yeah. Jean. Okay. Just repeat, just, I'm sorry, you just repeat it again, Jean. I'm, I'm, I apologize. On Article 31, yeah. a few times where it, well, the um, proponent used the term sub-district, so we can't change, we can't change what's in his, but in the discussion, there are a number of times where we use the term multifamily neighborhood sub-district instead of multifamily neighborhood overlay, overlay. district. Just and I just you. think we should substitute overlay district to sub-district wherever that throughout the discussion. In the discussion okay. and then in the vote and recommendation too. Got it. Great. Anything else, Jean? No, that's it. All right, Shana. Uh, yes. Just a minute. So in Article 25, um, the second paragraph talks about talks about the definitions of um, attached and detached buildings and um, I suggest adding a uh, very brief example um, so I'm just going to count sentences um, I'm just going to quick count sentences <coughs> here um, nope first paragraph second sentence the definitions of attached and detached buildings in the current zoning bylaw are internally uh, are not internally consistent. So some buildings do not clearly fall into either category. Um, and uh, so some buildings, and I would just add there, such as those connected by a breezeway or something similar. A very brief example um, for clarity purposes. I think uh, the breezeway example is uh, something that was something that was raised by the ZBA early in the discussion. I think that's fine. Um, so, Claire, if we add um, the for example such such as. Um, such as those, such as those uh, attached through a breezeway, as the example. Sure. Great. And uh, any other changes for Article Twenty Five? No other changes okay. for Twenty Five. So before we move on to the next one, any concerns with adding the example, Steve, Jean, no. Ken? These examples are for town meeting or for the so, to actually in the, in the article. In, no, in the report. In the report, okay. Um, yeah. And I, I'm supportive of that. I think that the more detail we can give in the discussion leads less, the more clarity we can provide there, the better, especially if this is one of the articles that we 
may recommend be considered as part of the consent agenda so that it is entirely clear yes. why the administrative change is occurring. Okay. Great. Uh, so I also had in Article 28 um, the second paragraph uh, the second paragraph begins, like many towns in Massachusetts, Arlington has a uh, inland wet, wetland district, blah, blah, blah. So it, so it talks about, it talks about other communities um, have found that administering zoned wetland districts um, create conflicts. And I just wanted to make sure that if asked, the Conservation Commission would be able to identify what what other communities, at least one other community, um, is having trouble. If not, maybe revise this to just say that the Conservation Commission was having trouble um, admis administering this. If there are, in fact, other communities that they're aware of, that's wonderful. If David can't, off the top of his head, mention one, then then the Conservation Commission yep. has the problem themselves. It's not the Conservation Commission that has the problem. Or the, the, it's, the the Z, it's the ZBA that has the problem. But again, I think that the um, clarification is that the Conservation Committee is aware of and can cite the other communities. Not that they're having a problem, which has been documented. Yep. Um, yep. And, and I think it is quite likely other communities are having this problem. Uh, I would not like the question to arise uh, at town meeting and, and not, not be able to answer it. Um, and that's all I have. Great. Uh, Ken, any additions or corrections? No, I do not. Okay. Um, so we could uh, motion to approve the um, the uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board report to 2024 annual annual town meeting um, with the stipulation that um, the Department of Planning and Community Development will confirm the ability of the Conservation Committee to um, or to to confirm the accuracy of that particular statement and adjust as suggested um, uh, if required. I, I just Gee, I think please. the way to adjust it if, if uh, David Morgan can't identify is just to take out in the first sentence the phrase that says like many towns in Massachusetts mm -hmm. and in the second sentence, take out some communities have found that, and then just start with administering. So if David can't identify, we can just take out those two phrases from the first two sentences. That makes sense to me. That sounds good to me. Any objections? Okay. Sounds good. Uh, is there a motion to approve? the uh, Redevelopment Board report to 2024 Annual Town Meeting as amended. So motion to the 25 through what, 34? Second. Uh, we will take a roll call vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The uh, report has been approved. And um, Claire, you and the department will work on getting those copies to the clerk. I believe that's requested. Correct. Okay, great. Yes. Thank you very much. I think it's being mailed on the 8th, um, so they may need it earlier, all the copies earlier this yep. week. Yeah. We're going to have the copies done this week. Perfect. Make the changes tomorrow. Great. Thank you very much. All right, um, so that concludes agenda item number three, and we will now open agenda night item number four, which is open forum. So anyone wishing to speak this evening, if you could raise your hand, um, you will have up to three minutes to address the board. Okay, 
Uh, seeing none, we will close open forum and move to agenda item number five, which is new business. And Claire, I will turn it over to you. Great, thank you. So um, I was away last week, um, but uh, uh, when I uh, got back today, I spoke with uh, the town council, Mike Cunningham, about um, this, the idea that we would hold a special town meeting during spring town meeting to uh, have town meeting vote again on the MBTA communities overlay map only. Um, um, the AG's office has uh, returned um, uh, a decision that they would uh, like us to revote on the map um, and uh, work with uh, Mr. Cunningham and town council's office to schedule the special uh, town meeting during spring town meeting. Um, for I believe it's May 9th, which would be you know in, during the course of the spring town meeting. Um, what we will have to do, what this, what my office is, what what is happening this evening at the Sled Board is that they are voting um, to hold the special um, town meeting and to um, uh, announce a date of opening and closing of a warrant um, to include a warrant article that will indicate you know that we need to revote on the map. Um, the department has uh, now, um, we've, we've prepared for this. Um, we knew that it, that it was a potential that we would hold this meeting. Um, we are uh, ready to advertise uh, a hearing um, and we are ready to notify, um, you know, all uh, parties necessarily, necessary to notify, um, including um, those under the overlay district um, again. Um, I think it's still to be determined. Um, Jean, is your question about you know, supplementary notification or any you know, uh, other notification that is required to those under the overlay um, about this, um, what will ultimately be a map change, a revote on the map change. Um, we should have an answer on that from town council as well. Um, and we'll know very, very soon within the next two days whether we have to do that um, in addition to the postcard notice that we, ordin we ordinarily send. Um, so, uh, excuse me, I said that the special uh, town meeting date was the 9th, it is the 13th. It's probably the 9th or the 13th. So what will have to happen, this board will, um, we will uh, advertise the, the hearing, um, and then on, um, on uh, April 29th at your regular meeting, you will hold a hearing, or you should hold a hearing um, on the zoning warrant article um, to re-vote on the map. Um, so this is where we are today. This was the procedural flaw that was identified and that I've tried to keep you apprised of um, as we've worked through the process um, with the Attorney General's office. And um, you know, this, is, uh, this is something that has uh, only really kind of been firmed up um, in the, over, the, over the last couple of days. Great, thank you, Claire. Sure. And to confirm, there will be no changes. Um, it will be the, the same. It is the same map that Correct. was voted on at Ball town meeting we will vote on at this special town okay. meeting in the spring. Great. Thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Um, any questions? Starting with Steve? No questions. Gene? So map meaning map and parcel list both, so we'll get to see both the map and the parcel list? Sure. Okay. And as long as we're doing this, as I mentioned before, we can fix the nomenclature? Yes. Well, we, we need to talk about that um, when we have a, when we have review the warrant article language. But we should Right, and at the hearing, the we should talk about that next week. Okay, and um, so I think the postcard will go out not only to everyone in the overlay district, but all abutters and abutters of abutters within 300 feet, whatever that is. We've extended it to 310 feet 300 to make sure we don't miss anybody. Ah. Okay, thanks. Sure. Great. Shana, any questions? None. Kenny. Uh, this is only pertaining to the MBTA area. We're not doing any other subject. No. We're not. Correct. No, I have no other questions. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other new business? No. Okay. Any other new business from the board, Steve? Actually, yeah. Fantastic. There's a little bit of trivia. One of the things that was released earlier this week was the 2024 annual Arlington Annual Town Report. Um, and one of the, the report includes a section on, you know, from the assessors in terms of, you know, what real property is owned in town and how that contributes to taxes. 
and they also include a little bar chart of the average value of single family homes and condominiums over the last couple of years. So 2024 was the year that our average assessed value of a single family home exceeded $1 million. So it was $1,014,000. Sure. That is my, my, my uh, new business for the week. Thank you for apprising everyone of that milestone. Uh, Gene, any new business? Um, the Arlington Master Plan update, we haven't had a conversation about whether one or more of the board will be on the committee, so I wondered if we could add that to the agenda for our next meeting. Sure, that sounds great. It's it's my expectation that we will have someone from the board yeah, so on the committee. We should, I, I'd say put an agenda item we'll so we can have a discussion and decide sure. who yep. wants to do it. Sounds good. Sure. Shana, any new business? No new business. Great. Um, and then I also wanted to bring up um, two scheduling items that we should discuss. We had um, discussed with the select board putting together a joint meeting in June, um, which by the time town meeting starts, we'll be <laughs> here before we know it. So I think um, that would be um, either, we said either June or um, in September. So I think if we can um, just start aligning calendars, that would be good. Right. And then we also had a um, initial discussion around the schedule for the um, Arlington Heights yes. um, rezoning. And so I think whether it's the next me meeting on the 8th or the meeting after that, it would be great to review. We had some feedback as a board on the initial plan with regard to other stakeholders who might want to be involved sure. and some timing. So I think it would be great um, as we're going into town meeting to revisit that and make sure that we're aligned on the outreach Promise. schedule. Okay. Great. Those are the only two items I have. Ken. Uh, yeah, I have just two minor ones. Uh, just want an update on uh, what's happened with the Atwood House. So, uh, very short update um, on the Atwood House is we've been in um, discussion with uh, Bob and Isi. He thinks that the project will be moving forward and has discussed uh, a hearing uh, date um, in May. Um, but these are very pro these are preliminary conversations. Did we last time we couldn't give him a deadline by? He was given a deadline by um, uh, Mike Ciampa, uh, and I believe I believe this board may have also given him deadline as well um, but the project is progressing he needs mr. NEC is uh, has been suffering some health problems and he is um, trying to decide if he can continue to work on this project to, to bring it forward or if he's going to need to hand it off to someone else but he did at least mention uh, a hearing date um, in May. okay and then uh, my second one was uh, we had talked about doing a PUD or uh, and looking at some sites. Has that gone further anymore? Or are we still? At this point, it has not progressed. No, okay. apologies. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> Very busy. Uh, understandable. Well, it uh, sounds like it might be something we want to take up after town meeting again, Ken. Uh, okay, just for, sounds like we can put it on the agenda for sometime in the coming future. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to push it like next week or anything, but I just want to keep. Keep that going. Yeah. Thank you for keeping it uh, on the front burner. That's all I had. Great. Thank you. Any other new business? All right. Uh, well, that with that, we will see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I mean yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.